Alright, so it is time for my A to Z book list wrap up, but they're not books, they're, they're kind of books, they're comic books and graphic novels. Hey everyone, it is Shannon and I'm super excited to be here today and to share with you the results of my A to Z graphic novel and comics challenge. This is an annual challenge that I've set for myself for at least two years, it might be three, but it's at least two, and it's actually one of the few challenges I actually complete every year, <laughs> and it's a very simple challenge, I just want to read a comic or graphic novel for each letter of the alphabet. Actually, last year, 2019, I also included manga in that, so it was any visual uh, storytelling medium at all. Um, uh, visual storytelling medium, is that the, would that be an umbrella term for comics, graphic novels, and manga? I am not sure. Um, but for this year, it is comics and graphic novels. I did a separate one for manga, and I didn't get all the way through. I think I got about halfway through. Um, but so once I started reading more manga, I realized I could probably do my own, but only got halfway on that. So anyway, and this is actually one of the few uh, goals or challenges that I do tend to complete. Um, it is my fifth challenge complete out of 39 challenges for 2020. Um, and I think it'll be my final challenge complete. I don't think I will sneak in anymore before the end of the year. Um, and that's fine with me. I like to overshoot and then see what happens. Um, but I, I really enjoy uh, reading comics and graphic novels. Um, I love art um, and uh, visual storytelling and, you know, and a lot of the stories. And so I thought I would just show show what they were from A to Z and uh, maybe a little bit about each one. I don't know. That could get really long. So we'll sort of see how this goes. I will list everything down below, including all of the illustrations illustrators, of course, um, and um, as I do in all my videos, and so let's get this party started. So for A, it's a bit of a cheat already. So for A, I read, ooh, I read Ricardo Delgado's Age of Reptile Omnibus, so I went with A for age. There were other ones I could have gone with, and Adventure Time is another comic I discovered this year, and I loved it so much, but I read this first, so it gets the A spot. Um, so this is an omnibus of dinosaur. Uh, I think there were there was at least three to four stories in here, um, and I, this was slated on Goodreads as volume one, but I couldn't find any more volumes. So it is um, a bunch of dinosaur stories, basically, <laughs> and they're wordless because dinosaurs don't talk and there's no preface to it. So it's all visual storytelling. Um, and there's a lot of chasing. Uh, there is, of course, some violence because dinosaurs aren't all herbivores. Um, so there is a fair amount of that. But there are there was also a migration story as well, um, and which also included, you know, needing to some sustenance along the way for the non herbivores. <laughs> um, but I really, really loved it. I thought it was amazing. You really got to know some of the particular dinosaurs. And uh, I, I thought it was just a wonderful uh, depiction of being able to see a story without having any words at all. And you really they were so expressive. The dinosaurs were so expressive. I really enjoyed it. And there was a lot of different, um, there was different uh, views too. So you got like really close views of dinosaurs. And then with the migration story, you got like far, like up in the sky views of dinosaurs. And it was really cool. I was a total just like browsing hoopla um, pick and I just picked it and I tried it. I'm like, Age of Reptile, sure. I didn't even pick up on the fact that it would be dinosaurs until I started reading it. So that was fabulous. Let's see what letter B was. Um, oh, by chance or provenance by Becky Cloonan. This was extraordinary. This I read really, really early in the year, and I think Becky Cloonan illustrated something else I read, and then so I found this. It was amazing. They're like dark fantasy um, stories, and they don't all have an element of fantasy, but they're, but they're heartfelt tragedy, like heroism, kind of stories and some had some romance as you can probably tell by this pic. Wow, it was great. And I think I'm think Maya from Maya Reads recommended either this particular um work or the artist in general. And I was thank you Maya because it <laughs> is was one of my favorite reads of the year. It was really, really good. So and I'm considering getting it uh, a physical copy and which is unusual for me because I read almost everything through Hoopla and Overdrive um, just because of in terms of accessibility graphic novels and comics can be very pricey especially with if you commit to a series so yeah so this was this was extraordinary very very happy with it okay let her see clue okay clue candlestick this was uh, does it have the author on here dash dash 
Shaw. Um, this I read from March Mystery Madness, and so it was a mystery using the characters from Clue. Uh, it, it wasn't, re but <laughs> it wasn't really my favorite. A mystery I still have trouble with sometimes, and it was interesting, but I didn't quite, the story didn't quite stick with me. Uh, now, of course, it's December and March was a long time ago, um, but it was kind of cool to have a tie-in to a very, you know, popular uh, mystery franchise, I guess. Um, so it was a fun pick for the readathon, um, but it didn't stick with me uh, over time that much. That's number D. Department H. Oh, I think I read this from March Mystery Night Madness too. Who Killed the Smartest Man on Earth? So I read Omnibus 1, um, and this did have mystery to it. There was a lot set that was underwater. I think this was translated. Was it translated? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, maybe not. Um, and but there was a lot of exposition in this one, if I'm remembering right. And so that made it a bit of a longer read and a bit of a heavier read. Um, and I was really more curious. Like, And I guess with mystery, you do need to, you know, you need red herrings. You need a lot of uh, tick boxes to make sure that you misdirect. But also when people get to the end of the story, they're like, aha. So, but the thing, I can't even remember if this is resolved in volume one. It's been months and months. And sadly, the Omnibus 2, I couldn't read it. For some reason, it wouldn't download well to my device. I went through all of the troubleshooting things. I think I even tried reading it online. It was a no-go. So that was a bit of a bummer, but it's also a technical situation and not really a fault to the, you know, know, <laughs> uh, to the work itself. So, um, so I would have continued the series, but I didn't just because of a technical issue. I guess I should try it again. Maybe they have updated it, um, or the app needed to be updated or has been updated since who knows tech is always, that's the flip side to digital reading is there's, uh, there can be a tech piece, um, that, uh, you know, can get in the way or in a lot of times actually help because it gets you to read the thing. So yeah, so that was department H. Um, and then for E, Echo Gear. So this is really interesting. This is three short comics, and I read them in the wrong order because there's one, two, and zero, and I think I read them in that order. Um, but this is a very different setup. It had lots of sort of like puzzles, and it was just a very different reading experience. Um, but I did find it a bit uncomfortable because I couldn't follow what it was trying to say. Like I couldn't, I kept on wondering if there was another message because it had this sort of mystery element to it, not just a mystery story, but just like that it was, had like, you know, a crossword and, and you, like it was more interactive, not like, not like you move stuff on the page or anything like that, but it was more engaging in that sense. But I couldn't figure it out. And, um, and there was lots of guns and skulls. <laughs> and so, and I was like, this is just making me a little uncomfortable, like not, knowing what it's saying and given some of the content like there was no for but for me there was no clear here nor there on on you know that there was a concern um but I just felt like you know a little confused I thought the art was extraordinary um and it has very few ratings and very few reviews so there wasn't much to go on in terms of what other people's um experience of it was it was just you know, looking through Hoopla and sorting things alphabetically and kneading a knee. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, which is one of the great things about this challenge is that, you know, you can find new things, but then sometimes there isn't anyone to talk about them with <laughs> or to see what other people think about it. So it's an interesting experience. So we'll see. Um, oh, F, I have for Fence. So this is a very well-known popular series um, and it's a sports series about fencing. It's an LGBT series um, and I really enjoyed it. It definitely, all of the, uh, you know, the accolades and the, the love for it is well-founded. It features a guy who goes to a boarding school to uh, become, to, to continue fencing. He's a fencer and he ends up rooming with sort of like the person who's his kind of nemesis kind of thing. It was really good um, and I read as many as the, the library had or Hoopla had or Scribd had and um, it's an ongoing series so I don't know where it's going from here. It definitely, I think I might have gotten sort of like one ending or like some stuff came to completion, but it definitely felt like there was more to the story. So I'll keep my eye on and continuing to read that. Jeep Galveston. This is another one that I read from March Mystery Madness. Oh, does it have jo Johanna Stokes by Johanna Stokes? So this is a history adventure um, pirate 
American West type story. <laughs> it was there was a lot going on. There was a lot going on. I didn't have a lot of context for this one. Um, I think I read it for March Missy Madness, so I don't think it really qualified as a mystery. Um, but that is when I read it. It definitely was sort of like high stakes stuff and was pretty intense from what I remember. So that was G. <laughs> H was heart and brain gut instincts. Okay, so this one is a bit of a cheat because it's really called gut instincts, but I included it for heart and brain. And I have read other volumes. I usually like for my A to Z to be new to me series, but heart and brain are so wonderful. These are like sort of single panel or four panel, like like jokey, funny comics. Definitely follow them on uh, Instagram. I, I love it. I love it. Heart always wants to like do what heart wants and then brain always wants to be logical about thing and I love that interplay because I'm very much um, on the midline between logical and I don't, I don't know like whatever the other side is supposed to, like right brain left brain like kind of idea like um more intuitive or whatever and so I really loved <laughs> seeing that conflict over and over and over again because I, I get it so it was a lot of fun and it's a great pick me up if you're having a bit of a like ah, this is a really uh, a good one for that at least I find so because I really like the humor and I don't always like humor but I don't always get humor but this humor I get <laughs> what do we have? I Invisible Kingdom so this is by G. Willow Wilson um, and this is a newer series. The second volume of the comics has come out and I have caught up with that. It's a science fiction series. I really enjoyed the first volume, but the second one I didn't enjoy quite as much. And part of that was that there was a fair amount of time in between them, which makes me wonder if I would enjoy things more if I wait till they're complete or a fair amount of it is out, because I really felt like if I'd read them back to back, I would have enjoyed the second one more. But there was some things in the second one I didn't like as much. Um, but generally speaking, this is interesting, had interesting worlds, interesting um, uh, uh, like people, belief systems, just even just the design, like everything about it was really engaging and interesting. So I will keep reading this one um, as it's being released, but I still got to think about that whole, do I wait till it's finished or not? So I, uh, I, J Jonesy, this is by, oh, I think it's Sam Humphreys. Um, so this one's about, this one's a, like sort of more middle grade or younger title about a girl who can make people fall in love. And she usually does it sort of like out of spite. <laughs> Um, this is another one where I enjoyed the first volume more than the other, but I did continue to read it, um, and, and it's just sort of, like, very fun and, um, like, very high-energy school drama type of stuff, crushes, those kinds of things. So it was a fair amount of, and being embarrassed about family, you know, kind of thing, like having to be involved in family things, but don't, not necessarily wanting to be. That being said, I felt like the second one, some, I felt totally, um, blindsided by some of the family stuff. I was like, did that happen? I don't remember this. Did we talk about this? Was this mentioned at all? So, you know, I don't, maybe I just missed it on the first volume or maybe it wasn't included. So it's an interesting uh, series, very, like, as I said, high energy and uh, colorful. And uh, yeah, so I will see where this one goes. I think, I think I'm up to date on this one. So I'll see when the third volume uh, comes out and uh, we'll see where it goes. Next up, we have Kate Kill Shakespeare. This one uh, I read during the summer for the Shakespeare readathon, and um, that all the world's a page. Um, I I was not a fan of this one. I felt like if you change the this is sort of like a reinterpretation meta ish kind of commentary on Shakespeare. So take the characters of Shakespeare, and then put a different plot and put them all together or some of them together and like just run wild right like fables if you're gonna like fables what fables does for uh, like fairy tales and folklore this is sort of the same idea but I felt like if you change the names of the characters so they weren't Shakespearean characters you would have no sense that it was about Shakespeare so it just it, it was very very guy heavy in terms of the characters and I just I wasn't digging it, so it was one of the misses, which is too bad, because I love Shakespeare. <laughs> uh, L, Like a Fire. This one was tough. Does it say who it's by? Nathan Fairbairn and Matt Smith. This Smith. This was a uh, graphic novel, so it was all in one story, um, and it was sort of medieval-ish 
Black Death type set, uh, well, like, you know, which is being prosecuted, uh, persecuted kind of timelines. So I never like that. <laughs> Because it's wrong. <laughs> so, um, not that it's incorrect that it happened in history, but the fact that it happened at all is really bad. Um, so, but it was an interesting story. Um, so, it's sort of, you know, um, but it just really wasn't really my jam. Um, but, uh, but it was an interesting story and had some good characters uh, in it. So that's what I picked for L. There wasn't, there's not a ton for L. <laughs> uh, M, Moon Girl and Devil Monster. Um, and I read volume one. Um, I, you know, I read this early in the year and I, I gotta say, I hate to say this, but I don't remember anything really about it other than, um, I was really looking forward to it. And then, it's a bit of a blank, so I guess it didn't leave, like, and I didn't continue the series. And I was really, I was really looking forward to this one, but I think, I don't know if I'm right about this, but I think this also, I get a little frustrated sometimes with um, comics and graphic novels where the, like, this is a female uh, protagonist, but I don't think it's written by a woman, and I just, like, at some point, I'm like, I wonder... <laughs> You know, I'd like to read some own voices, uh, graphic novels, and I am going to work on that and work to get better on that. And I think I did read some, but I just feel like there's just like it's it's there's so many of what's out there is not. Um, so, yeah, so that's I think that sort of played into it once I sort of researched into it. But don't quote me on that because I can't remember. I think that's what happened in this one. And this one does not say who the author is. So, and I do find it harder to find information on um, uh, authors and uh, illustrators for comics and graphic novels, so when I search them out. So it is a bit tougher, but just means it's more work and it is going to be worth the work. So hopefully next year I'll get better on that. Okay, and Not Away, this is by uh, Joshua W. Cotter. I talked about this in several Friday reads as a science fiction um, one, it's a graphic novel, all in one story. I, I wasn't, a, like, it went some weird places. Some of the art was amazing, but I felt it was a bit disjointed in sort of, the, there's sort of like three different things or three different styles or moments or times or something. And I didn't, I didn't super connect with it. Um, so wasn't, wasn't, it was one of my last ones and wasn't a huge one, but I, <laughs> Again, there's not a lot for N. <laughs> oh, Once in Future. Okay, so this is an Arthurian retelling, so it's urban fantasy. And I think I, I might have read volume one. Like, I might have read the first comic last year. And then this year they started um, releasing them in volumes. Like, so for a collection of, like, four to five comics. So I read the first volume this year and loved it. I absolutely loved it. The second volume is out, but I haven't read it yet. Um, so it features a guy who didn't know that his family has a connection to... I don't know if they have a connection to... I think they're more like... I don't think they have a connection to King Arthur, but I think they're more like have connection to... Um, like fighting supernatural and paranormal things in an Arthurian sense. So I was like all over this and his, um, I think it's his aunt or his grandmother is amazing. So this was a huge win. One of my favorites of the year for sure, even though I read it in January. Uh, for P, I read Prince of Cats by Ron Wimberly. This is, uh, oh gosh, this was a, it was a retelling Prince of Cats, Tybalt, um, so from Romeo and Juliet, set in the 80s New York. So this one, is, this is another one where the premise, I like the premise a little bit more than the actual uh, story. There also was, I thought, some gratuitous nudity <laughs> that I didn't need, um, which feels weird to say with comics, but was the truth. So it was an interesting take, but I felt like wasn't wasn't quite, I was not the target audience especially in terms of the like in terms of the gender dynamics um but the setting for sure <laughs> but um so yeah but I'm glad that I read it uh our rascal this is by Jean-Luc Delgin Delgin it's French and it's about a cat it was quite cute a lot of you know cat owner moments of cats doing things that they shouldn't or like it just it's a lot of really familiar things I haven't had a cat unfortunately for years but I do I am an auntie a cat auntie to my sister's three uh kittens the um studio kittens Shibumi Escher and Scout that my sister Jamie has um but and I have had cats but I don't have one right now so anyway so there's lots of familiar moments it's very cute I enjoyed reading it um and I think it's a reluctant cat cat owner as well so that always makes it <laughs> a little bit more interesting 
So now we have, did Q, oh, do we forget Q? P, Q, did I get in these in the wrong order? I remember what I read for Q. Oh, okay. We have to remember to go back to Q at the end. Oh, I'm going to P, Q, R. Yeah, we did. Uh, S, Snoopy on Mars. <laughs> Snoopy, a beagle of Mars. Um, So this one I read, and I didn't realize that Peanuts has continued, even though it's not drawn by Charles Schultz anymore. And so I was like... So I read it, and I'm kind of like, hmm, it feels a little different, and then I researched it, and I'm like, hmm, that just feels a bit weird. So it was cute. Most of it wasn't set on Mars, though. <laughs> so there's that. But uh, yeah, it was interesting. I haven't read Peanuts for a long time, and um, uh, so that was interesting, but it wasn't it wasn't what I was expecting on several levels, so it wasn't a huge win. Uh, T, Taproot. Okay, this is another one that is quite beloved, beloved and is definitely worth it. It is about a gardener and a ghost, and it is a love story, and I loved it. It was great. It was really, really wonderful, and it's by Kezi Young. So... Yeah. Yeah. And that's nice. The, the one, that's the other thing. I do like to do my A to Z to find titles that I don't know anything about, but it's also an opportunity, like with Taproot and with Fence, to read titles that people do talk about and finally get to them. So I'm glad that I read it, and that was definitely one of the highlights. Uh, for you, I read Yusagi Yohimbo, uh, book number two. This one, I, I think I read volume one for you last year is not the easiest letter to get a title for and I also really really loved it this is by Stan Sakai and uh it features a rabbit who is he I think he's well he's Yohimbo so um there's lots of fighting uh questy type things adventures uh, fighting the good fight there is a longer arc story with a bit of a nemesis type thing that I can't follow because the these bind ups are I think selections from the overall comics and there are lots of them so I just sort of like read what the library has and but even though there's like different omnibuses and different volumes and I so I'm I think I'm following one story but I'm not sure I like it, the adventure and I love all of the animals and there, I think the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles were in this one as a bit of a cameo, so there was that. So that was a bit that was great. T U V Voyage of the Deep by Stan Glan Glansman. This was my very last read for all of the comics. Um, I enjoyed it, although this is again another uh, misleading, uh, cover. This never happened. This is a 60s comic, um, that features a submarine that can be small or it can be larger and it goes on different missions to help save America from the enemy, the unspecified enemy. And so it's sort of like war adventure stories with a bit of sci-fi because the, the, I don't think we have submarines even now that can become small, smaller and bigger. Um, and then some of the sea creatures are quite large. And then some of the things that the enemy does, I don't know if po is possible. So they're sort of more adventure type stories. Um, and I did enjoy it. Um, but it just wasn't quite what I was expecting. I thought it was going to be sort of like fantastical or Cthulhu or Lovecrafty. Nope, 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 not at all, not at all. <laughs> T U V W, the word, the woods. This is by James Tiernan Four, um, the fourth. Um, uh, so this is actually this is one of the more popular series I think that I've read. There are several volumes out. This is a survivalist type of situation where I think it's a high school or maybe a community college um, ends up being like like. It, relocated like to another planet or something it's been a while since I read it um I this one like so it's got a bit of a paranormal speculative fiction kind of edge to it but I felt it was really way more survivalist it was way more you could feel that people were starting to turn against each other and that's not one of my favorite things so it wasn't a big win for me I didn't continue it but I am still considering continuing it it might end up on W next year actually W because who what where when why um you, you do end up having a fair amount of choices for W so it's not uh, too hard. I think I picked this one because it's one I had heard of a fair amount. And it was available on Scribd. Um, and so I was curious as to see how it would read through Scribd 
because uh, I read Scribd online, not through the app, because the Kindle Fire tablet doesn't have the app because it's, you know, Scribd and Amazon are kind of, <laughs> you know, like, kind of like, you know, it's kind of a competitor, kind of, you know, <laughs> so um, as opposed to the Kindle app. Anyway, I don't know if that's why it's not available. Maybe someone's just never wrote the program. Anyway, so, and it wasn't technically great, but I think it's just my Wi-Fi where I was reading it wasn't the super strongest. So, yeah, so it had the deck sort of stacked against it, but the whole fact that it's a bit more survivalist and speculative was really the thing that makes me think I won't continue it. But who knows? I might. <laughs> T-U-V-W-X. Oh, Exile. So this is, so here we go. This is another survivalist one, but I actually ended up enjoying it. This is about a bunch of crypto uh, zoologists who ends up being exiled um, through a storm onto an island where all this weird stuff is going on. It was actually quite interesting. I enjoyed it a fair amount. Um, and I think it was all in one story. I don't know if there is more coming Coming out, uh, but it was interesting. I liked it. I, there could have been more developed um, uh, women characters in it. Um, that would be my main criticism of it. But generally speaking, I thought it was a fair amount of fun, and I liked the creatures, and and I thought it was good. I thought it was good. The tension was good. I liked the art. So that was that was Exile. T V W Y Young Romance by. Um, the best of Simon and Kirby's romance comics. So this is another one that's a comp like Voyage of the Deep. It's a compilation of older works. This was fascinating. Um, these aren't really romances as we think of them now. They're very much cautionary tales. And uh, it was it was, like. And then there was a whole bit about, like, there was a comics code where you couldn't do or say certain things, and then everything had to end with a happily ever after and have certain moral values and stuff. So it got a little less interesting but um, and a little less tragic. Um, but it was very fascinating, but it took a long time because there was a lot of text on the page. And then Zed Channel Zero by Brian Wood. This is the one where there was a book. Becky Cloonan also did some work on it. So this one is how I found out who she was, I think. This was excellent. This was a graphic novel. It was kind of like a zine. It was done in the 90s. And so it has that sort of like photocopied zine feel to it. And the tech is older. And I just loved it so very much. This might be my favorite. I'm not doing this as a ranked list. But if I did, this would be in the top five, probably the top three. This is great. But it also for me in terms of where it lands artistically is something in particular that I enjoy. I think it was almost all black and white. It was fantastic. And I am cheating for Zed. It's channel zero. But for Zed, sometimes we do. <laughs> it's harder to find something. And I'm trying to, oh, I don't see. For Q, I read Quince. And I can't believe I missed that. Um, I did re read it recently. Let's see if it's on one of my other boards. Which was a superhero. Uh, it was a teen superhero around... Oh, I don't know if I'm going to say it right. Quince, Quincedhetera? Like a... Like a oh, let's see how you pronounce it. E-A-N. No, I want Quince graphic novel. Or actually, it was a comic. And uh, it was about a girl who gets powers around her... Um, this is like a sort of a coming-of-age event. And uh, it was really interesting. I really liked it. She has got the very, like, you know, traditional graphic... Not graphic novel, superhero arc to it. Um, but it was wonderful to see it with a young uh, female lead. And um, she got help from her abuela. Um, but nobody else could know. And she goes through a lot of the, you know, things that superheroes go through. Like, you can't tell anyone. You're super tired. You can't share your identity. And, like, it was really wonderful. I enjoyed it a fair amount. I think it was a graphic novel. I think it was all in one. I don't remember if it's continuing beyond the bind up. I don't remember. It was an Eisner Award nominated work. Um, yeah, so that was, I think I got all of them. If I missed any others, I will leave a full list down below. Um, but there you go. There is my A to Z graphic novel challenge and comics, right? <laughs> comics are issue by issue graphic novel is all in one story in one volume I did not know that at the beginning of the year so learning is a good thing uh, <laughs> let me know what your favorite graphic novel or comic was this year and do you like to wait till the series is complete or do you just like to dive in at any particular point in time I'm still on the fence on whether or not I want to 
wait for at least a couple of volumes to be out before I dive in. Um, but I definitely plan on doing this again next year. It's always a great way to find and explore new titles, as well as get some of those talked about fav uh, favorites and fan favorites out there finally read. So there you go. There is my A to Z graphic novel challenge. Thank you for watching to the very, very end. And I will be back soon with another video. Take care.